Standing on the beach at the northern end of Bribie Island are these concrete reminders of a time when World War II came to southeast Queensland. During World War II, the Defence Department built what's known as Fort Bribie to stop the invasion of enemy ships and submarines into southeast Queensland. It consisted of several buildings and a campground for the 150 soldiers who stood sentry over the ocean guarding our country 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's been about 30 years since I crawled over the World War II bunkers on Bribie Island. Nowadays, they're at risk of being washed into the ocean. So I'm interested to go and have a look today at how bad they've fallen apart. I've got my vehicle access permit and I'm heading up the beach now. To get to the beach access road, you go to the eastern side of the island to the suburb of Warham and then head north and take the last turn right. This little park is a good place to stop off and let some air out of your tyres to get ready for the soft sand. I didn't bother today because I think I'm going to get through. Let's see how I go. From this point on, it's vehicle access permit only. You can get them online at Queensland Parks and Wildlife Services. If you can get through this soft sand here, you're going to be pretty right for the rest of the island. Well, I made it all the way down onto the beach and what an awesome day it is here today. Well, a fair bit has changed in this time. The shoreline was 50 metres that way and you had to climb over a dune to get to this other big one here. And there's another one over here that was totally underground and now it's exposed. I had no idea it was ever here. Let's go in and have a closer look. This is what's known as the number one gun emplacement. It's the biggest and most majestic of all the buildings here on the beach. Well, it doesn't seem to have deteriorated much in the last 30 years, but they have blocked off the entrances to any of the rooms so you can't climb in there for safety reasons. This building housed a gun that was known as a 100 pounder. That means that its projectile was 100 pounds in weight. In today's metric system, that's 45 kilograms. It had a diameter of six inches, which is 155 millimeters. And the barrel was a whopping eight meters long.
this bad boy had a range of 19 kilometers. It would have taken a team of quite a few men to operate this gun. And on the back wall there, you can still see the original Judy roster board. Well, I know one name that's not gonna be up on that wall, and that's Frizzo. You see, my family immigrated from Italy to Australia several years before the war, and we weren't really allowed to help out during the war, especially if guns were involved. Funny that. This is the number two gun emplacement. It looks a bit like it got hit by a bomb, but what actually happened was there was a fire on the island many years ago, and the timber that supports the roof caught on fire. Eventually, the roof caved in. On high tide, the water splashes all the way around this one. It won't be long and he's gonna fall into the ocean. He's already got a pretty big lean on him. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Every time I come here, I discover something new, and this was a bit of a treat. It looks like before the cement dried, one of the soldiers scratched in the build date. How cool is that? During wartime, this World War II bunker behind me was fully submerged under the sand for camouflage reasons and it was the signals operations room. It had a big magnetic cable looped out into the ocean for detecting submarines and ships. And if an enemy ship was detected, they'd send a message to these two guys, the mine control huts. And they had a cable leading out into the ocean as well with mines and depth charges connected to it. They could set the bombs off with a press of a button. You can still see a piece of the original cable sticking out of the sand. Both of these buildings were completely buried in the sand with access in through the back here. This is the most northern of all the buildings. It's called the Northern Searchlight. It housed a searchlight up on the top story and in the bottom story that's a bit silted up with sand, housed a generator to run the light all night long. In the background there you can see Caloundra and as a kid I would look over and you can always see this bunker was always out on the beach, unlike the others that were hidden up in the dunes. This bunker also marks the most northern point you can take your vehicle due to sensitivity of the northern part of the island. It's in pretty good shape considering it's lived on the beach most of its life. Unlike the southern searchlight here, doesn't seem to have stood up very well to time. This is the mounting block that the generator sat on, and it was powered by a Ford V8 flathead petrol engine. That would have just purred away all night long. Bunkers, batteries, gun emplacements, gun turrets, forts, fortresses, call them what you want. But I strongly recommend you come and see this here before it gets washed away into the ocean. It's a big part of our history. It was such an exciting adventure coming here 30 years ago, as it would be for any first timer. But I must admit, Coming here again, it's been just as amazing. Will I make it back in 30 years time? I certainly hope so. Bribey Island had another similar setup south of here and they called that one Fort Skirmish. Only a few of the buildings remain and you can access them with a normal two-wheel drive vehicle.
If you don't have a four-wheel drive of your own, no worries. Just give Jason a call from G'day Adventure Tours. He has a range of tours and activities that take you all over the island. Well, it's been an awesome day in paradise and I hope you enjoyed my story. See you next time.